Prime Day es el 16 y 17 de julio. Con las ofertas épicas exclusivas para miembros Prime, recibe el reconocimiento que tanto mereces. ¡Wow! Gracias. Ni siquiera preparé un discurso. <coughs> Quisiera agradecer a mi familia, que siempre necesita cosas. También a Sam, mi repartidor, por entregarme todas mis ofertas increíbles tan rápido. ¡Te adoro, Sam! ¡Mua! Compra ofertas en Electrónicos Hogar y más este Prime Day, del 16 al 17 de julio. Everyone knows therapy is great for solving problems, but getting therapy has its own problems too, like finding the right therapist, fitting into their schedule, and of course, the cost. Well, BetterHelp can solve those problems. It's totally online and built around your schedule. It's surprisingly affordable too. Connect with a credentialed therapist by phone, video, or online chat, all from the comfort of your home. Visit betterhelp.com to learn more and save 10% on your first month. That's BetterHelp H E L P. Ah, welcome back to Herd Tell. Okay, when we got to talk environmental stuff, this is one of our go tos, Ethan Brown. You have heard his advertisement for his excellent Sweaty Penguin program. Yes, that's Sweaty Penguin. It's a great name. It's a great program. Uses a lot of humor. You've heard that advertised right here on Herd Tell, but we got the man himself today. Talk a little environmental news and headlines. Ethan, how are you, sir? Great to have you back on Herd Tell. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, we have these people. Look, everybody has a right to protest, especially in America. How you protest, though, is open to interpretation. And once you start doing certain things, you're no longer protesting or breaking the law. Over in the UK, uh, these Extinction Rebellion knuckleheads, uh, this is not how to protest, neither to get people to enjoy your cause or to get your message out or anything else. Here's why I think that's a bad method, because you're screwing with the normies. The normies that don't follow this stuff, don't interrupt their daily life. Don't make them late for work. Don't do, that, that's never going to get your message across. That just ticks people off. You were writing about it. You wrote about it in PBS Peril and Promise here, though. I think even they are starting to realize, especially if they want the fundraising to continue, they're going to have to change course here. And it looks like they might actually be listening to a message for a change. Yeah, they've uh, been famous for climbing oil tankers, gluing themselves to paintings. They even tweeted that I was trying to delay meaningful climate action after I wrote a column saying that Don't Look Up was a stupid movie. <laughs> and I, yeah, that's not going to win you much support. And they, at the end of 2022, posted a piece on their website titled We Quit. I'll pull it up for a second. They said, as we bring in the new year, we make a controversial resolution to temporarily shift away from public disruption as a primary tactic uh, they're going to be putting relationships over roadblocks. And yeah, that's that's a good thing, I guess. We'll see if they follow through on that. But I wrote this piece to kind of say, hey, if you're really faithful to this, I think it could be good for you. Let's be adults here. They're not doing this because they want to stop doing the publicity stuff. They're getting to a place where they have to because it's putting them in an untenable position to continue it because people are fed up with it. I'm assuming probably whoever's funding this is probably having an issue with it. That's usually how these decisions really get made. And let's be honest, somebody's putting a lot of money behind this because they're getting access to places. They're well-funded. They have matching T-shirts. Somebody's paying for all this. Some combination of those factors is what's driving this. It's not altruism, is it? I have no idea. I think <laughs> um, it, it could be any of those things. I would imagine just me personally speaking that if you can have the impact you desire on the environmental movement without getting yourself arrested all the time, that that would be a good thing. And certainly that's the path I've chosen to take. But yeah, it, it could be any number of reasons, but certainly they have to be seeing that this strategy of causing this much public disruption is only driving people away yeah so now i can already hear it is like okay the two white guys that are nicely dressed and comfortably sitting in their homes are complaining about the protesters fair enough here's here's where i draw some lines i'm not a huge fan of the going and chaining yourself to the tree on the piece of property that's going to be developed but I can logically get my head around that one, right? You're you're physically stopping. You're putting a little skin in the game. You're dealing with the developers and the construction crew. I at least logically understand that one, right? I don't like the climbing the tower or climbing the tree. You know, I don't like it. I understand it. To me, that still falls under the realm of protest, even though if you're trespassing those sorts of things, you start pushing the boundaries of breaking law. And once you're breaking the law, you're no longer protesting. I get, I can understand that. When you're just harassing average people who 
you have no idea what they believe. That's where it's a big drawn red line with me of, okay, now you're just being a jackass. Now you're just harassed. These aren't people that are directly involved. At least protest a company, a development, a political figure. You know, focus your attention. If you're just disrupting cities full of people, that's not only, you know, not helpful to your cause, that's its own kind of bad because now you're just messing with people's lives and livelihoods that may not have anything to do with what you're upset about. Yeah, maybe I should have started from here. I fully respect people's right to protest, right to free speech. I think it's very admirable, honestly, that someone's willing to put their body on the line for a cause they believe in. I think in this particular case, for example, we saw in 2022 uh, some of the Extinction Rebellion folks, it was largely a group called Just Stop Oil, which is over in the UK, that were doing a lot with famous paintings, gluing themselves to them, throwing soup at them. You saw headlines like this every week throughout the fall. And that's where it's a little strange to me because the paintings have literally nothing to do with climate. And the only way people even find out it had to do with climate is if they read past the headline. And what a lot of the activists were saying, so I did try to listen to them and understand why they were trying to do this. They felt that people were just so unaware of the climate crisis that they had to do something that drastic. They would make it akin to people were sleepwalking and we have to wake them up. And I just don't think that's true. I think people are aware. I think there is a lot of progress going on. Obviously, we need to do more. There's a lot more that can be done that can be beneficial. But it just didn't square to me to have that visceral reaction to the state of uh, what's going on right now. Prime Day es el 16 y 17 de julio. Con las ofertas épicas exclusivas para miembros Prime, recibe el reconocimiento que tanto mereces. Wow, gracias. Ni siquiera preparé un discurso. <coughs> Quisiera agradecer a mi familia, que siempre necesita cosas. También a Sam, mi repartidor, por entregarme todas mis ofertas increíbles tan rápido. Te adoro, Sam. ¡Mua! Compra ofertas en electrónicos, hogar y más este Prime Day, del 16 al 17 de julio. This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Yeah, Ethan Brown joining us, host of The Sweaty Penguin. He also works through PBS. We're going to link to all his stuff. Here's where I think some elements of the environmental movement have really got a problem on their hands. They've got two things happening at once. One is they're getting more and more on social media, which people see more and more of what they're doing. And if you're doing this extreme stuff, people don't like it. So you're almost self-telegraphing yourself into a corner of being irrelevant or pushed off as a crank. The other problem they got is that same technology is also informing people of what's going on in the environment. This isn't the 70s. This isn't the 50s where you just get a newsreel of a nuclear blast and everybody freaks out. People understand that, yes, even if you think there's major environmental problems going on in the world, and there are, there's also great progress being made. I think the extremism is getting so far off base of the actual reporting of what's going on. I think the doomsayers, I'm just talking about the people that are constantly you know, going Al Gore of we're 10 years from destruction, which he said 14 and a half years ago, that kind of stuff just turns people off. But technology just reveals it. It's like the old, you know, televangelist declaring the world's going to end. After the world ends, nobody wants to pay attention to you. I think that's just an inherent problem with the extremism of it. And a lot of folks, especially the ones that actually care, are trying to veer away from it. Is that a good way to read what's going on right now, big picture wise? Yeah, I think I saw you tweeted about the 
um, 90 seconds to midnight doomsday clock or whatever. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I I don't know where that number comes from. I, I haven't researched it that much uh, in all fairness, but the idea that we're all going extinct on Thursday is just ridiculous. And I've talked about this before. I think this is where some of the more extreme environmental folks and I very starkly differ is yes, climate change is a big problem and we are seeing a lot of extreme weather events and natural disasters that are being fueled by climate change around the world that are causing deaths, that are causing injuries and people's homes being lost and money lost and all these different things. But these are isolated events that taken together are cause for concern. There's not one, it's not like Don't Look Up where you have a comet that's going to hit the earth and just kill everyone all at once. And I think there's a lot of nuance to this. Furthermore, if we go back in history and we look at any cases of people kind of degrading their environment and it, it's just never led to extinction. Populations can collapse, but they someone always finds a way to hold up and live on. So just the name Extinction Rebellion, I've always wondered, like, if you're talking about biodiversity, sure, there's an extinction crisis. If you're talking humans, we're just not on that trajectory. So I don't know. I think um, there's definitely room to be concerned, but also a lot of room to be optimistic, because like you say, we are making progress in many areas. Yeah, Ethan Brown, let's take the other. Look, there's two sides to the extremism here. Let's take the other side, the folks that just think any kind of environmental concern whatsoever, or any kind of climate concern whatsoever. Oh, it's a big hoax. Oh, it's all a religion. Yes, there's elements of that. Part of the problem here is we can't have a dialogue about it because each extreme only acknowledges that the other extreme exists and then forgets there's this big spectrum of people in the middle. This is why you take the approach you do. You use humor, you use logic, you try to talk about it in practical terms. I think what needs to be happening here is a lot less the big picture, the world's going to end stuff. Give people bite-sized stuff they can handle. Clear-cut logging, they can understand that one. Strip coal mining, they can understand that one. Both of those are from, you look, I the property right next to ours got clear-cut logging, has been vacant for 25 years. Eats me up every time I go home. Practical stuff like that. People want clean drinking water. People don't want smog. Why can't we just focus on those practical things? And I know the answer is the extremes make more money, but there's a lot of people that want to talk about those issues, but can't because you got the two ramparts throwing bullets at each other, right? Yeah, my dad told me about a year ago, if the extremists are pissed off at you, you're the rational person in the room and you're doing something right. And I have really held to that since he said that to me. I think you're right. There's kind of been this labeling of the climate deniers on this side, the climate doomers on that side. And to me, it's so much more of a fluid spectrum. And I think there's a large middle that most of us are in where um, maybe our levels of passion might be different, but we all understand there is an issue going on. We're not all going extinct, but we do have to do something about this. And furthermore, you're right everyone wants clean air, clean water, and a healthy environment. That is not controversial. How we get there, there's room for debate, but that premise is very easy to wrap our heads around. Furthermore, when we get into how climate and pollution and biodiversity loss can affect our economy, we'll see that there are monetary losses due to these issues, and I think everyone wants a healthy economy. So I do think there's a lot of room for common ground here. I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out in my career is how do I cut through all that and get a rational voice heard. And I hope at least through my podcast, obviously I've tried to add a comedic element. I think especially a lot of young people are uh, responding to comedy and will tune into something because it's funny and then they'll kind of get the information. I also think emphasizing solutions, just doing so much critical thinking and nuance. All of these are ways that can get people engaged and get people feeling less overwhelmed. But it's certainly a challenge when you don't get all the clickbaity headlines. Yeah, Ethan Brown joining us. I feel like I ask you this every time you're on, but I'm going to ask you again because I'm just going to keep hammering it because I think people need to hear it. We don't do enough talking about how far we've come in environmental progress. You know, the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland hasn't caught on fire anytime recently. 
I rem- I can drive by the alloy plant, the big steel mill that my grandfather worked on. And and I know people that work there and they tell me they're like, oh, no, if you see anything being admitted from the plant, that means something went wrong. Everything out of there should be clean paper. And I can show you pictures in my lifetime where you can't see down that valley. How do we talk about that kind of stuff? It seems to me the best way to combat doomsaying and denialism and the two extremes is just get some practical stuff. Just get some pictures of the cars in the 70s and the gas crisis and be like, just look at this. Things are better now. But we don't want to talk about the good things. Yeah, things have improved so much. In the United States, emissions have been falling since 2005. I think they've fallen around 20% since then. Globally, uh, when the in 2015, the Paris Agreement was signed, the world was on track to warm by like 4 degrees Celsius. Now we're on track to warm by about 2.6 degrees Celsius. That's still not where we want to end up, but it's a whole lot better than 4. We've fended off a lot of the kind of climate tipping points by getting from four to 2.6. And hopefully we can bring that number down even further. So you're right, there's a lot of progress. And that's just big picture. If we go locally, you can go to so many different communities and see, uh, like you said, the rivers being cleaned up. There were just uh, last week, I think dolphins were spotted in a river in the Bronx for the first time in years because pollution had been cleaned up in that river. So, so much exciting stuff going on. And I think that keeps me energized working in climate. And I hope people can recognize that and use that as motivation to continue making progress. Yeah, Ethan Brown, I appreciate your take on this. Look, environments like a lot of other things like education, like politics, like policy, like the economy, we don't have to agree on every little in and out of it. I think that's part of the problem. Number one is everybody's like, oh, well, we have to agree on everything or you're my enemy. No, no, no. We can get to 80 or 90 percent on a lot of this stuff just on common sense. And I think you try to do that. So until we get you back on the program again, let folks know where they can find you, what you got going on. The Sweaty Penguin is advertised right here on Hertel. Let folks know about that because it's better when you say it than when I say it. And let folks know how to keep up with you until we get you back on the program. Yeah, thanks again for having me, Andrew. The Sweaty Penguin is a comedy climate podcast where we are making climate change less overwhelming, less politicized, and more fun. We are presented by PBS's National Climate Initiative, Peril and Promise, which is also where you can find the column on the Extinction Rebellion that I just wrote. And you can also find us anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, etc. You can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the sweaty penguin. I just had a meeting with one of my producers this morning. We've got some cool Patreon stuff in the works. So do go check that out and support our work. Yep, you do good work. You'll continue to be a regular. Ethan Brown, appreciate you, my friend. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Folks, if you've listened to the Herd Tell program, you've heard our friend Gabriella Hoffman, but you need to make sure you're checking out her podcast, District of Conservation. It's a podcast exploring the nuances of true conservation efforts from D.C. and beyond. From topic discussions to exclusive interviews with conservation and energy newsmakers, Gabriella keeps listeners appraised of the latest news stories while elevating important voices. Listen to District of Conservation on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are played. Folks, you've heard of Ethan Brown on the Hurt Tell Show a couple of different times, but if you're interested in learning about how to discuss things like climate change without all the politics and doom and gloom, head over to his podcast, The Sweaty Penguin. Sweaty Penguin is a late-night comedy-style climate podcast working to add nuance, critical thinking, humor, and hope to the climate conversation. they got over 100 episodes already, breaking down weekly news stories and specific topics from the vanilla to the ADHD to the international accountability to orangutan. Yes, I know, it's a comedy thing, so just go with it. But each time, exploring different ways we can make progress on these issues while still helping the economy, health, security, and everything else we care about. Feel overwhelmed, exhausted, or excluded by today's climate change discourse? This is the podcast for you. Find The Sweaty Penguin wherever you get your podcast or at www.thesweatypenguin.com. Prime Day es el 16 y 17 de julio. 
Con las ofertas épicas exclusivas para miembros Prime, recibe el reconocimiento que tanto mereces. ¡Wow! Gracias. Ni siquiera preparé un discurso. <coughs> Quisiera agradecer a mi familia, que siempre necesita cosas. También a Sam, mi repartidor, por entregarme todas mis ofertas increíbles tan rápido. ¡Te adoro, Sam! ¡Muah! Compra ofertas en electrónicos, hogar y más este Prime Day, del 16 al 17 de julio. Brace yourself for something fuel nominal. Unleaded 88 is the clear fuel choice. It's cheaper, cleaner, and greener. And it's grown by Iowa corn farmers. Now that's totally worth the hype. So pump it up with Unleaded 88.